what's up guys it's vigilant texan here today i want to talk about timelines and how our controllers can create false history last week we talked about the great nation of tartary and the empire of tartaria and how they've decided to scrub them from the historical record and I touched on briefly in there how there are a lot of buildings and um, maps and uh, papers who when you look at the date on them it'll say like a J or an I and then and then three numbers like J 628 or I 743 and then later we're told instead that oh that was 1638 or that was 1738 they replaced the J or the I with a one basically inserting a thousand years of history and a thousand I believe is a little bit uh, more than they crept in from what I'm finding um, but I've been researching this pretty good for the last few weeks and um, at the topic I'm going to try to touch on after this will be some interesting stuff about the millennial reign. Um, I watched a show with a, a fellow truth seeker named David Carrico who has decided that he believes that it's, the Bible doesn't support a millennial reign and that the Messiah will just come back and the kingdom will be delivered to the Father and, and that their, the thousand year reign that they're trying to convince us is going to happen would actually be of when the thousand years when uh, the devil is loosed after the Messiah has already come and left and that to, to trick people into worshiping him for a thousand years very interesting because it is says in the Bible that he's supposed to be loose for a thousand years but we're not going to get onto that yet that's for next time today we're going to stay focused on history and how could they have lied to us and falsified all these things and taken credit for all the things that the Tartarians did and that reminds me I wanted to touch on uh, another video that I believe was made by uh, a Masonic gatekeeper and in it um, let me see if I can find it real quick uh, in it they basically tell you how the pyramids were built and how they weren't hewn stones and that it was really just they knew how to melt granite and pour it into molds and it way, made way way much more sense to me pyramids 2018 English did that one help me find it? Oh, yeah, here it is so in this movie and I'm obviously not going to play it because it's someone else's stuff but let me see if I can get some screenshots here the basic gist of it is that they use this cool uh, here it is they had a way to use a huge like magnifying glass to harness the sun's power and melt uh, granite and, har and limestone and stuff that we previously thought wasn't meltable and, and that they would pour it into these wooden molds and that's how they made the pyramids and when you go I've watched it I suggest any of you watch it maybe I'll leave a link in the uh, description but I believe this is truly how they did it they also reveal that the Egyptians were black he spends a little bit of time on that and how they Hollywood has showed you that they were white and they're really black and uh, so that's interesting but then the part that really gets me Oh, and he also goes back and tells you how the Egyptians were really great um, uh, at navigating the oceans and that it was Egyptians that went and settled in North and South America and that it was their progeny that uh, became the Baalbacks or whatever, the original pre-Mayan, pre-Aztec builders of all those pyramids and stuff in South America which is, I believe, also the truth about how that, and that they weren't uh, 
they, that they were all related and that it was dark-skinned people that ruled the entire world during that time uh, in the Egyptian pharaohs and everything. But then, at the end, the reason why I said I believe he was a Masonic gatekeeper is because, strangely enough, then there at the very last 30-40 minutes of the video, it takes a strange twist and he suddenly starts to give credit to the Masons for building all the great architecture that we know as being Tartarian and basically spills their little lie about how they've always told everyone that they're these great hewners of stone and how they're the greatest Masons ever when in reality all they did was learn how to pour concrete and he gives them credit for building and pouring all these great churches and structures and he goes in and shows different places where you can tell that it's poured stone and not hewn because there are things like shells and little bits of dirt and stuff that you can see right there in the brick so that you can tell that it was liquefied uh, rock instead of hewn stone. And so, knowing that the Masons wanted to take credit for all that and knowing that the Masons are in there with the Catholics and they're all in bed together with the Jesuits and all that stuff we talked about last time, I would like to propose how they did it. Here's the timeline. So you have the ancient Egyptian calendar. Let's, let's take a look at what our controllers tell us about it. They argue about when it was used. Um, they basically focus on the fact that it was a purely solar calendar and that somehow just doing it that way uh, made it to where things were off, you know, and they, to where they, they couldn't really use it. But in here I noticed they admit that there was a different calendar being used by Alexandrian or Augustus. And, you know, when Alexander the Great supposedly finally conquered Egypt and they, and he, triumphantly, you know, entered Thebes and the supposedly the Pharaoh at the time just crowned him Pharaoh and king of the world and, and all this. And then they, they proceeded to destroy the libraries of Alexandria, burn them all, and then turn around and take credit for all the Egyptians' inventions. And that how uh, it's been shown that most of the, the Greek and, and uh, Roman and uh, philosophers that all of the stuff that they supposedly took credit for was really Egyptian and that they all studied in these mystery schools and that it was between there and then later during the reign of Caesar when these evil things came to pass but I thought it was interesting here that they said that they were using this Coptic calendar so I'm like what's this Coptic calendar look up the Coptic calendar well Coptic calendar, also called the Alexandrian calendar, is a liturgical calendar used by farming populace in Egypt. Really? The calendar is based on the ancient Egyptian calendar. Hmm. So apparently there was this, and boy, look at the, look at the symbology here. And, uh, but, but this, this um, Coptic calendar here is interesting. being used as far back as 284 AD so just before the Council of Nicaea and we're going to find out that, that once again it was during this Council of Nicaea that they were able to really wrangle in uh, what they wanted to accomplish so we're going to look at the okay so here's here we go the Julian calendar which everyone admits being the calendar before the Gregorian let's see Um, and this is interesting a website I love to use is this Webster's Dictionary 1828.com uh, it's an online version of the 1828 copy of Webster's Dictionary and I find it interesting I guess I had closed the tab with the Julian calendar so let's just pull that one back up um, but yeah so this Julian calendar proposed by Julius Caesar in AUK 708 now this is interesting I look up this AUC, and this is the 
date in years since 753 BC. So <laughs> the Julian calendar, they say, was put in in 46 BC, but they like backhandedly admit that it was only considered that year counting from 753 BC and that they, these uh, Caesars were using this AUC abbreviation and that they were actually counting from a previous BC time. And what do you know, 700 years, 709 is, is kind of what they admit to. Well, it says 46 BC, but then next to it, oh, it's AUX 708, whatever the heck that means. You see, a little funny there, 700 years. Interesting. So they're in this Julian calendar. Wow, this where do they they um, show the uh, what is that thing called? I forget. It's the some type of instrument that I've talked about before. Uh, anyways, now when you read about this Julian calendar, it's very much like the Gregorian. They they talk about how you know the the year. They, all they say is that they're changing is oh well which is we're changing it to from 365.25 to 365.2425 or they they're they're claiming that all it did was change uh, a, a little bit of how many uh, days are in the year and then right here they say oh and look here see if you know it's May 1st 2021 on the Gregorian calendar on the Julian calendar, oh, it's only April 18th, 2021. So they're trying to trying to make you think that oh, they're very close to the calculations. They're they're very very close. You know that oh, we could we switch from one or the other. Oh, not a huge change, right? What they want to tell you. But then I found a Wikipedia page entitled Calendar Reform, and I thought, well, this is interesting. Why would they have a whole page just dedicated to calendar reform. And I came across something very interesting here. Because if you, what's funny when, you, when you're studying the, the evil people that run the world, um, you notice a lot of times they tattletale on themselves. Like they don't really, they don't really cover up their, their wrongdoings. They'll leave a little, little trail of, of crumbs for you. So here we go, Julian and Gregorian reforms. When Julius Caesar took power in Rome, the Roman calendar had ceased to reflect the year accurately, supposedly. The Julian reform made 46 BC, 445 days long, and replaced the intercalary month with an intercalary day to be inserted within February every four years. This produced a noticeably more accurate calendar but it had an average year of 365 days and six hours, okay? This had the effect of adding about three quarters of an hour every four years. The effect accumulated from inception in 45 BC until the late 16th century, the North Equinox was falling, okay? And then under Pope Gregory, the leap year was altered um, so that it would be, the leap years would be these years, and the rule makes the year, and they're claiming that they only changed it from 365.25.24 hours or days per year. But then it says, so that the northward equinox would have the same date in the new Gregorian calendar as it had when the Council of Nicaea made recommendations in 325a, March 21st, 10 days were dropped, so that October 5th, 325 AD, became October 5th in 1582. Did you see what they just admitted to? That during the Council of Nicaea, 325, on March 21st, 10 days were dropped so that October 5th became October 15th in 1582. And you're thinking, did they just admit that during the Council of Nicaea, they fast forwarded the year all the way from 325 to 1582? Which would make our timeline match right up. And I'm going to show you, they admit it twice. It's not only just here on this calendar reform page, but if you go to the page for the Gregorian calendar, 
scroll down in here here it is in the first year since the first Council of Nicaea 325 the excess leap days introduced by the Julian algorithm caused the calendar to drift and therefore the date was important to the Christian churches because it was fundamental to the calculation of the date of Easter they, oh, it's always about Easter, when's Easter to reinstate this association the reform advanced the date by 10 days Thursday 4 October 1582 was followed by 15 October 1582 so there again at the Council of Nicaea they jumped it all the way to 1582 I mean unless I'm reading this wrong and then I thought what's also interesting on this page for the Gregorian calendar they say 2021 in various calendars and they show you that the Armenian calendar thinks it's 1470 this year the uh, let's see the Bengali calendar calculates it at 1428 the Burmese calendar thinks it's 1383 what do you know these ones that people kept using they're all way more close to what it should be the Igbu calendar thinks it's 1022 Iranian calendar they think it's 1400 the Islamic calendar 1442 right so where and I think it was the Coptic one that was in there too where was it yeah, Coptic calendar, 1737. So, wow. And then I came across another interesting thing. I was watching this guy break down the War of 1812 and how if you look at the history that we have been given about what the War of 1812 was, supposedly they tell us the French invaded Russia. There was a big fight between the French and Russians, you know, everybody almost died. And then, you know, I guess the French just kind of retreated back or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't have the War of 1812, the, the official story locked down in my head. But this guy goes through a full 36 minutes and looks at all the paintings of the war and all the um, depictions of the different soldiers and what, what um, uniforms they were using and I'll leave a link to this one in the in the description as well. Uh, it, it, it is all in Russian though, so you have to watch the subtitles, but uh, he basically blows their story out of the water. And one of the interesting things he points out is that in these depictions of supposedly the French or Russian fighting each other, which we know they both had um, guns at that time, in a lot of the paintings, they're fighting against these folks with bows and arrows and spears. And I got to thinking, wait a minute, you know, this was also the case when the, uh, the British um, came to America, supposedly. They were fighting against Indians that didn't have guns. And I thought, wow, you know, if all of this stuff coincided with, say, the invention of gunpowder, like, if the parasites who took out the Tartarians did it as recently as a couple hundred years ago and were able to jack with our calendars and, in, and begin on all the way back from the Council of Nicaea, fast forwarded it to 1582, and then we sat here and lived out from 1582 till now, when they, and, and during that time they basically live to us about what each of the wars that have taken place so if you go so i believe if you go back and look at all the wars that have happened since 1600 or 1582 which by the way also if you guys remember we were looking at this thing last week um i was saying how all the evil that came from the canaanites all the way down through the pharaohs and the babylonians and the romans and the vatican that all of that stuff became kind of the crowning uh, control in the after 1717 with the Masons and then the Jesuits in the 1500s and then the Illuminati and the forming of the USA in the 1770 whatever. So if they could have all of the stuff that's happened since then could totally be fabricated and they're telling us that 
oh, it's the like it's the Allies versus the Nazis when really it was just the parasites taking out the Tartarians, you know, and going in and erasing because if they like I said if there was some sort of weapon that took out their base in the North Pole and created a worldwide mud flood there's still going to be people left in those abandoned cities that are going to not going to want to just be taken over by the parasites so they had to go in and kill off the remaining people there and boy wouldn't that have been easy if you have guns and they don't they could have quickly just gone in exterminated what's left taken all the kids put them on uh, orphan trains ship them off using their railway systems that they were already there and found and just reassign everybody where they're supposed to be then they had then they do all these huge world fairs where they bring in millions of people from all over the world and reindoctrinate them with what the truth is and who who is and what color skin people have and boom falsification of it all here's an interesting clock i put a couple of interesting old Occultic clocks. This one is on the uh, a church in Prague, a, a Tartarian building, I believe. Very old one, and it's interesting if you zoom in. There is a flat Earth map inside. Um, you know, and just out of there, a couple of verses from Daniel. And he changes the times and seasons. He removes sovereigns and raises up sovereigns. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who possess understanding. He reveals deep and secret matters. He knows what is the darkness and light dwells within him. Daniel responded and said, Blessed is the name of Elah forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and seasons. Daniel 2, I mean that was Daniel 2, from later in chapter 7. And the ten horns are ten sovereigns from the rain. They shall rise, and another shall rise after them. And it's different from the first one, and it humbles three sovereigns, and it speaks words against the Most High, and it wears out the set-apart ones of the Most High, and it intends to change appointed times and law. And they are given into its hand for a time and time and a half. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away its rule and cut off, and to destroy it till the end. So he also mentions that they would change the times and seasons. And that's just what I'm saying. Very well could have been. That's how they did it. And sure does sound like it on this one uh, calendar reform page. By the way they say it. When the Council of Nicaea made recommendations in 325 AD, 10 days were dropped so that October 5th became October 15th in 1582. They were at the Council of Nicaea in 325. And suddenly, oh, we've got a new calendar, guys. This Gregorian calendar now. Uh, uh, we, 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 we miscalculated there. It's, it's, fifth, it's, it's and, and probably, oh my gosh, it would be so much easier for them to get away with it by putting it like J582, right? Or I582. And that would explain why for those years, we saw those with the J and the I because that was during the time when the Vatican had put in the Gregorian calendar and declared it 1582 but didn't want to throw people off so bad and tell them, it's, oh, it's a whole another thousand years well, and they wanted people to accept this new calendar so maybe a lot of places they wrote it with a J or an I instead of a 1 just to kind of make them think, oh, well, hmm, I guess it's just a couple hundred years more than we were and eh, whatever and the problem is that it's like it is nowadays, you know, when the parasites have the largest megaphone and control the media and the newspapers, uh, they can just declare something to be true and just keep declaring it to be true over and over loud enough. And eventually, if the opposition is quiet enough, it just becomes papal law, it just becomes what's there written in Wikipedia, whether it's the truth or not. Um, anyways. Just thought I would rumble around and talk to you guys about some theories I've been having and look at some interesting things I found and um, hope you guys are enjoying, you know, researching and studying. Hope you're having a good Shabbat. Um, I'll leave some links to my Facebook page and those two videos I referenced and um, 
See you guys next time. Shabbat shalom.